It's time for a uh, Monday morning phone jam. You ready? Yeah. Ready. Uh -huh. Thank you for calling Mid-Atlantic. Yes, and who's speaking, please? This is Jennifer. I need to speak with Jill Cox, please. Okay, just a minute. It's the person setting up the sham. <laughs> She's playing along. Hi, this is Jill. Mrs. Cox. Uh-huh. Jill Cox. Yes, ma'am. Yes, this is Virginia Jefferson calling with the Department of Labor. I'm in the Warrington, Virginia office. Uh-huh. We are calling regarding a, uh, two complaints that were filed in the month of May uh, uh, with reference to your office and your name. Okay. It is procedural that I uh, uh, follow through and do a report on these things, and then at that point, uh, many times they are filed, and sometimes we have to pursue the matter further. Okay. This regarded uh, two subjects. That one apparently was uh, terminated. And the other apparently offered a resignation shortly thereafter. Yes, Mrs. Cox, uh, these two subjects apparently came into the office together and filed a complaint against you. From the same person? Uh, from two separate individuals. Gosh. Saying there were communication problems, among other things, with you in the office. I have... Said when she was corrected that you got upset, she had problems even understanding your, your communication style. Oh, I have no idea. That on occasion, you would talk about not being able to be understood. I have no idea who you're making reference to. The initials of one party, they do allow us to go that far. Okay. J.F. J.F.? Yes. I don't want to play guessing games with you. I just need to know if you've ever been reprimanded for having a problem with your people. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Suppose I were under your supervision. Mm -hmm. All right. Suppose I was under your supervision and suppose I was late for work on more than one occasion. How would you handle the matter? Um, I'd have a conversation with you about that. Have a what? I would have a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't understand your conversation. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. To find out um, what the problem was that was causing you to be late and then see what I could do. Well, according to, according, to Joe, according to who filed this complaint, uh, J.F., uh, you didn't, uh, your communication skills were lacking. And you, you aren't fit to be a supervisor. Oh, my Lord. Oh, what? I said, oh, my Lord. I'm having trouble understanding you. What is Lloyd? L-O-I-D. Lloyd? Oh, my Lord. Who's Lloyd? Is that your supervisor? No, 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 no. I'm saying, oh, my Lord, like, oh, my God. Oh, L-O-I-D. Right. I thought you said, oh, my Lord. No. It's hard for me to believe with your speech impediment that you would even be a supervisor. I, I don't consider that a speech impediment because I have an accent that's different from yours. Well, I consider that an impediment of some kind, and apparently uh, this party, who we just called J.F., had a problem with you as well in your communication technique. I, I don't think, Lloyd, as you would say, I don't think this person can even understand your instructions. I do applaud this agency that you work for for hiring someone with an impediment like yours, but it is difficult to understand you. I tell you, I used to work as a telemarketer. You'd never make it in that line of work. That's for sure. Can I have your name again? Virginia Jefferson, Department of Labor, Warrington, Virginia. I've been here 23 years. Okay. So, uh, and, and would you consider maybe transferring into another department, maybe where you could work alone and not have to supervise? No, ma'am. Because I don't see you as someone who needs to be working with others, based on these complaints filed against you. Well, ma'am, I, I don't believe that from the complaints that have been filed... These are just two on my desk. There are probably others. Well, I, I don't know that, but... Um, I don't think, based on two complaints, that um, I have been given an opportunity to... Been given a what? An opportunity. Oppor oh, opportunity. Uh-huh. I see. I had to stop and think for a minute as to what you were trying to communicate there. Do you, when you speak, do you speak from your diaphragm and speak clearly? Uh, you, sometimes it sounds like you're slurring your words. 
Maybe if you would speak clearly and open your mouth a little wider when you try to communicate with your employees, we wouldn't have as many communication problems. Thus, complaints. Um, that may be a good suggestion. I'm making notes as I speak with you. Okay, and so am I. Any additional comments from you? Um, not that I can think of. I think it's, um, unfortunate. You think it's what? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. That when a complaint comes in, that the, um, party that is being complained... Excuse, the what? The, the party. Uh-huh. The party. Uh-huh. The individual. What is a party? P-A-R-T-Y. The party or the individual the or the person. I'm sorry. There you go again. The party. Uh-huh. Ms. Jefferson, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, because of my accent, it seems to me that you are indeed having a difficult time understanding me. I certainly am. I'm more familiar with the Warrington, Virginia way. And it seems to me, you know that old saying, when in Warrington, do as the Warringtonians do, that maybe, just maybe, someone in a supervisor position should be able to communicate with people from Warrington, Virginia, as opposed to where you from? Uh, Massachusetts. Well, that explains it. Plus, I feel like people from up there have a different attitude. Well, um, you might be right. In fact, I sense that you're a little angry right now, but you're trying to hold it in. No, I'm... Um, yes, you are. You're angry. Don't tell me. Ms. Jefferson. Yeah. What would be the point of asking me a question if you already have the answer to Well, it? after 22 years, I sense certain things. And I sense that you're very angry and bitter. Ooh. Well, you may be uh, passed over for a promotion or something. No, ma'am. Perhaps you got your position by assuming a position with someone. I'm going to end this conversation, Mr. I Jefferson. told you you were angry. See, what I've done is tested you to see if you were angry, and once again, I've proven that you were angry. I, I think that, that... Are you angry? Ms. Jefferson, I think that that... You're angry. I think that that... A-N-G-R-Y, angry. I'm putting that on your file, Miss Cox. Angry Jill Cox. Ms. Jefferson... Oh, look at this. I just received another complaint on you just this morning from a Jennifer Tennyson. Are you aware of her complaint, Gio? No, ma'am. Well, I just got one fax to me from Jennifer Tennyson. She says she can't understand a word you say when you start talking about the party. She Ooh. says you are very angry. And if you're not angry now, you're about to be. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Jill. Hey, Jill. Hey, Jill. Hello. This is the Steve and DC radio show. Yes, sir. <laughs> and this is a phone sham on you, set up by Jennifer Tennyson. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, talk to Jill. Go ahead. Jill, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> now you're angry. I told you you were angry. You're threatening to kill her. Angry, angry, angry. Party. Party. God. You are so ugly when you're angry. You'd have to be Christ himself not to react to you. <laughs> you people, you're all crazy. <laughs> hey, well, uh, you're a good sport, Jill. And uh, Jennifer, it was a good idea. Thanks for the, for the sham, all right? Thanks, guys. Party. Party. <laughs> if you want to set up a phone sham... Let us know about it. You can email us at stevedc at steveanddc.com. We are the home of the morning phone sham called Stephen DC Show.